Deb, yes, ma'am. Can you tell us what you're running for and what your platform is? Would you do that for us so everyone in here knows? Please. Okay. I'm running for the Lexington High School Board. My platform is reduction of administrative fees. I want the majority of the money to go to the kids and their learning. They're not learning what they need to know. Um, I want to look into the school lunch program. I don't think they're getting fed right. I've looked at the menus for, for August. I can put those up in my sleep, and they don't look exciting. And I know the kids don't eat the majority of the food. They're going to eat garbage. Let's give them something decent. And I'm not talking fruit salads. Um, I want to reduce the administration people. I think we've got too much in the high bracket money, and it's a waste of money. Um, I don't think that expensive schools are the way we need to go. We need to ensure that every child gets what they need to learn. We have kids that aren't learning because they're bored. Let's help them. They were great. Do, you not, do you or do you not agree that the high achievers in our schools are being, I mean, we have plenty of resources for uh, for learners. So they have all this resource stuff. The high achievers, they're slack. And when you said poor, that's what reminded me to slack on the classes to get them going. They don't have, they have gate and they have, I don't know what, you know, some of it's called gate, some it's called tag, some, you know, different in talent, whatever. But they don't have, that's just extra work. They don't have programs geared resource programs geared towards high learners. They don't have an educational system set up to meet the needs of every student. High learners, low learners, the, and the kids that are only going to get the C grades. I mean, there are kids that just, okay, I'm bored, I'm just going to do this. We need to meet everybody's educational needs, not just the slow learners, not just the brilliant minds that can go That's what beyond. I'm about. The brilliant ones don't have <laughs> Those kids will always achieve because they can go beyond the book. Absolutely. But we need teachers that can help them go beyond the book and find what they need. And what do you think about crummy teachers? How are you? How would you? How, how does it go? I don't know. Think it would be you. I guess it would be the system that would weed out the poor teachers. I think that's what McZace is trying to do with making teachers accountable. Uh, from what I understand of teacher accountability, and I've been researching it for about three months, it puts the teacher at the level where if their students do not succeed, A, they don't get their bonuses, they won't get their educational grants, and they can, after three strikes, you're out. We need to make sure that we have good teachers in place, teachers that want to keep going. I heard from a parent that said his daughter kept complaining because she wasn't getting enough in, in class. So they went to the teacher and they said, well, can you give her more homework? She wants more homework. She wants to learn. And the teacher goes, well, you teach her at home. Why should I bother? That's what we need to change. There needs to be, it doesn't take extra to say, okay, I have an excelling student and I need to challenge their mind. Let's make sure I have extra. It, it takes nothing. It, it takes five, ten minutes to find something more for this child to do. But we need to have the teachers on task. We also have to hold our parents accountable. It has to be, as, as, I, as I used to, to tell people, it needs, everything that a child learns needs to be a marriage between the parents and the teachers. You can't have a disconnect. When that kid comes home with a bad grade, don't attack the teacher. Ask the teacher why. Ask the student why. Put both on task. It has to be done together. Without parents and teachers, you lose. So we are having, a, some of you guys, some of us, don't have children in school any longer. We have grandchildren. But anyway, some of you have children that are going to school start school, that are in school. So in reality, we really do need a good school board. And right now, I'm in Lexington 1. I'm in your Lexington. I don't know what some of y'all are, but all across the board, school boards need to be revamped. 
Mm. One thing that a lot of people don't know, and I'm sure Devin knows this, is that school board is one of the levels of government that many people don't pay attention to, but they have a lot of sway over how your tax money is spent. Right, a exactly. lot of tax money. Exactly. Millions of dollars. And you know, some of them have, uh, some of these school districts have accounts of money that is not on the books, but it's held in, you know, banks like when I when I ran back in 2003 for election deposit, they had like 100 million dollars in an account in a New York bank that wasn't on their their uh, report. What's that for? I'm gonna do that. I don't know. Flexi like Dubai has a slush fund. Yeah, it's the they, same thing. When they realized that they weren't gonna get the money they needed, they go, oh well, I guess we have to pull that money out. Use it now. Well, why didn't you use it before? Yeah. Debbie, you know what the answer because was on that question in front of the board when they had the last tax increase in Lexington 1 and Lexington 5 and the Lexington County Council? I'm assuming because they said they didn't have one. we can. Oh, because we can. Yeah. Debbie well, Summers said the reason we raise taxes is because we can. That needs to stop. We don't need to raise taxes hey, for education. Give her, give her a name for honesty. Yeah. yeah. You got children getting ready to die. Not getting ready yet, but you will. So, in the future, would you like in our school system for your children? Well, three of them. They're all going to start at the same time. <coughs> what will you be looking for in the school? I'm looking at the school that, that has a high success rate. You know, I'd like to have something with smaller class sizes. Because I think sometimes our teachers are overwhelmed with too many students in the class. I don't mm -hmm. think that's a good learning environment because of distractions. Do um, you think 22 kids per teacher is too many? Yes, I do. Yes. I My school, there's two teachers per class. Yes. A teacher can, and then a I can teacher tell you, I can tell you, I've been out of, yeah. I think I've been out of 18 years now. And half my life, I went to Lexington, and I did, I did over you know, I, I did, I how many did you have in your class? When I was back when I was going to Lexington, probably thirty-two. And how many did how many teachers did you have? Boy. But I transferred to Gilbert, and I went from about thirty people in a class to about twelve, fifteen, and it was just night and day difference. I mean, just huge. You, you had less distractions. The teacher was the teacher, sixty-five. Yeah, the te the teacher is able to have control. <laughs> It's just, I think it's just I a had 65 in my class when I was in your office. Satchel Ford has two teachers on the way up from your class. I studied at Satchel Ford. A lot of these, a lot of these, a lot of these students Ford. have a teacher and a teacher's assistant or something. But I agree with what he said on that because they, they're able to devote more attention to, learn, to teaching instead of, what do you call it, discipline. Because right. you got a group over here that over here that are trying to learn and you know, I would love to see all education privatized. And I get really irritated when I hear somebody say, you don't support public education when if I support homeschooling and private schooling and government run schooling. Because government run schooling claims themselves to be public education. Everything outside of that, oh that's not public education. Bull. When you educate anyone who's in the public, that's public education. So, and, and I have to agree with Deb on one thing too about the, about the whole iPad. You know, iPads are not number one. And I do I do a lot of volunteer with leadership in one and district one and, and job shadowing programs. And every time I go to a high school to, to talk to a class, what does everybody do? Walking down the hallway, everybody has an iPad. And someone can say, well, you know. This, this helps them do this and do that. I, I don't believe it because I've asked some of my instructor friends at the schools, how do y'all like to have them? They say they're distractions. They play games on They say they're not supposed to be able to play games, but they find ways around to, to play. It doesn't take much to crack it. No, it, and, and uh, you know, when I was in high school, we had access to computers. Now, they were stationary computers, but we had access to them. And I think that's fine. just fine. I, I came in I think fine. the only time I'd be open to that is when, we, when you can prove me that you have taught them and they have learned and retained. Yeah, yeah, you have done that, then I think we need to open that dialogue. And I think what Deb is saying is right, too. If we can get rid of some of that top heavy administration money, we could take it more teachers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That could go down, like she's saying. Teachers or supplies we could, or whatever. We could, right. well, we this, could the like, the, the, you know, like Chad was saying, have 12 to 15 students 
in a classroom versus 30 in a classroom you know, I, I and have each of them. You know, I would much rather, I would much, much rather have less districts. Because it seems like we have so many districts, so yep. many six-figure salaries. Why not one? And not enough county? teachers. Why not? That's right. Why not have a one county and take all those big budgets that we have on these payrolls and hire more teachers? Right. Yeah. You know?